Welcome to the presentation for the Learning Revolutions Emergency Home Learning and More Summit. This session will talk about the SUNY Exploring Emerging Technologies for Lifelong Learning and Success Project, sponsored by the State University of New York. For short, we call this project MTEC MOOC. And this session will discuss this hands-on um, online learning exploration of emerging technologies for lifelong learning and success and how these can be used for at-home remote emergency learning. The MTech MOOC learning opportunity is targeted to a wide variety of learners. Anyone who has an interest to stay current with technology's rapidly changing evolution is welcome to participate. The project is best suited for college age students and instructors from K-12 higher ed and others. The um, range of learners can include um, some high schoolers and possibly even middle schoolers and certainly parents of learners are um, encouraged and welcome to participate, to keep up with these changes, to keep up with their student learners. The main objective of MTech MOOC is that um, it encourages discovery learning to explore and reflect on innovative and created use, creative uses of emerging technologies. In today's technology environment, there are too many choices. There is a large list of tools that many of us have to siphon and sift through. They all have uh, different purposes and many have different levels of quality. So MTech MOOC will help you or your learners determine which are the best technology tools to use for your purposes. MTech MOOC is a project, um, a lear online learning opportunity that's freely available. And it has two different parts. One part is a Coursera-based MOOC learning opportunity. MOOC stands for Massive Open Online Course. That just means a course that is large and available to anyone. And the MOOC provides a supportive online learning opportunity. Uh, the, the online learning opportunity has a discussion forum and um, many people will share the results of their explo explorations with technology tools. And our research has shown that the most learning occurs just by reading and viewing what other people are learning. Um, the Coursera-based MOOC is um, it's a learning management system. And by that, I just mean that it has multiple sections, modules, interactive activities, um, discussions, quizzes, and you'll see on the screen just one example. We also have a number of videos that are um, available through the MOOC that are that feature faculty, staff, and also students from throughout the State University of New York system. The uh, content of the MTEC MOOC is uh, the underlying idea is that we promote being a lifelong learner. The first module is the most extensive module out of the five different modules, and it covers lifelong learning and concepts that you need to support being a lifelong learner. For example, we talk about um, information literacy. We talk about understanding what Creative Commons is. Um, other topics are accessibility of online content, um, open educational resources, and a, a growth mindset, and basically just the strategies of being a successful lifelong learner. There are a total of five modules, and then the next three modules in that course cover the four C's of 21st century skills. These four C's are communication, collaboration, creativity, and critical thinking. 
So module three combines communication and collaboration, and then creativity is the third module and critical thinking is the fourth module. These skills have been identified through um, the National Education Association as the top skills that employers desire in those that they hire. So in the MOOC, the learning process um, includes creating a personal e-portfolio. An e-portfolio is simply a personal website. And in the course, we encourage the creation of a website that showcases the um, technology tools and artifacts that are explored. And um, uh, we hope that you also do hands-on activities and create digital artifacts. And so the e-portfolio that you create, um, it, is, it will be um, very soon an optional um, portion of the course. Your e-portfolio will create um, and, and exhibit four different digital artifacts. Two of those are something that you are asked to create yourself and two might be just something that you explore and reflect upon. Um, your portfolio will also include reflection about what you discover and learn while you're using those different technologies. Um, other things that you will gain by completing the course is a digital badge. Um, digital badges are great to share your accomplishments with your networks. Um, you can put them uh, on your portfolio that you've created. You can also share them through social media, through email, put them on your CV or resume or whatever the case might be. Um, in addition, the Coursera platform issues a certificate of completion. And um, those items are something that um, anybody in the world is welcome to complete the entire course for free, including all of the activities and the assessments and getting feedback on those assessments. What you won't get if you do not pay the $29 course fee is the digital badges and the certificate of completion. Um, you can still complete the course though. And uh, for since this course has been created by the State University of New York, anybody that is affiliated with the SUNY system, uh, students, faculty, staff, alumni, um, informal partners such as the COIL consortium um, are welcome to participate fully and they will also earn a free digital badge and Coursera certificate. But the best thing we hope people will get out of the um, process of going through the MTech MOOC is intrinsic rewards of being a lifelong learner. And you can learn more about the MOOC by going to the website that was on the very first uh, screen. I'll repeat it now. It is suny.edu slash mtech. And that is S-U-N-Y dot edu slash e-m-t-e-c-h. This presentation is going to focus mostly on the MTech Wiki and the MTech Wiki has been built to complement the MOOC. So I mentioned the discovery activities that um, or the discovery exercises that you complete in each of the different modules to create a digital artifact. Those um, are spurred on by this collection of tools, tutorials, and resources that you find in the MTech Wiki, which is available at that URL I mentioned, suny.edu slash mtech. And the Wiki currently has close to 500 different um, resources, and they are um, available to explore and I will show you on the next screen how you can search and filter those resources. Um, you can also use the wiki totally as a standalone resource. It's not necessary to participate in the MOOC to be able to take advantage of the MTech wiki. Um, you see the home screen of the wiki on your screen on the right. And this screen here is showing a blown up version of the search function in the wiki. You access this by going to the discover menu that you see in the top of your screen. And if you come to this page from the MOOC, you are directed to the section of your, um, if you are in module one, 
you'll be shown the resources in the MOOC that relate to lifelong learning. If you come from module two, you're shown resources in the wiki that relate to communication and collaboration. And same as the case, module three, you're given the, just the creativity resources and critical thinking is for module four. So you're immediately taken from those 500 resources and it starts limiting your selection. You can then limit further. So it's always a good idea to figure out what is your objective? What are you trying to achieve in order to meet your goals? And so the filter, the first one on the top on the left hand side, starts giving you filters that relate to the module that you're in. So if you're in communication and collaboration, you have the choice. Do I want to communicate with others? Do I want to create a professional identity? Are you trying to enhance collaboration, raise awareness or share information? Those will limit your list of resources and tools even further. And you can also limit by the um, emerging technology categories. For example, um, accessibility, audio, blogs, wikis, um, simulations, video, uh, photos and images, um, mobile apps, gamification, and others that you can see. So you can use those together, select multiple options, and continue to minimize your list so that you have uh, more of a targeted look of what are some of those tools that you want to possibly use. You can also um, uh, just search by keyword and it will pull up if you know you are looking for a reference on using video. You can type that into the search field and it will pull it up for you and you can also sort by rated. Um, by that um, you see that you can rate the different tools and um, we hope through crowdsourcing that um, the best tools will then be able to rise to the top. So you can see what other tools um, people are appreciating more and finding most useful. So um, this is a wiki. And so we desire participants in the MOOC and anyone to contribute and to add records or add resources. You go to the contribute menu, you create a login account. This is a separate login than the MOOC. Um, once you create that account, you can look at the contributor guidelines and you can um, uh, add a new tool. We hope that you search the selection before you add something. If there's something that's already available, you can modify it. So, for example, if you want to add a related tutorial, you can add that to a currently existing record or just add a brand new tool. You see one more item on that screen that says rate a tool. So that's where we hope that you um, promote the different tools so that the best ones rise to the top. Um, we have changed that since this screen grab and it's now in an up and down arrow system. And you do not have to be logged in in order to rate a tool. So if you're looking at a screen and you see a record and you say that's a good one, you can just click the up arrow. So the last part of this presentation, I am going to share some of the particular resources um, that you might find. And um, just to show you how these might be used in, an, um, in a home learning situation or in any kind of learning situation. And so in the lifelong learning section, one of the first things I want to show you are the selection of ePortfolio tools. So since the, um, <clears throat> the MOOC does ask learners to um, <clears throat> create an ePortfolio as an optional assignment, we do have a category that will allow you to select from the, um, just to find the tools that are appropriate to use as an ePortfolio. Um, we say that you can use any one of these tools. And right now I think we have close to 40 different options. And if your campus happens to have an ePortfolio tool that is used at your school or at your campus, it's highly recommended to choose that tool. Um, this will allow you to have um, the ability to get the support from um, the people at your school, the technical support, 
And, um, but there are a bunch of different options on the screen that you are um, encouraged to choose to create your portfolio for the MOOC course. So the next item that I want to show again inside of lifelong learning is the um, under digital and media literacy. Um, there is a really great resource called the Web Literacy for Student Fact Checkers. And so this is a free ebook and it is available online. And it was written by Mike Caulfield. And so you can just come to this site and read the book. And um, it does have, um, you know, just uh, kind of a table of contents here. Um, some of the things that are talked about is how do you determine that information that you find is truthful and accurate? How do you search for um, resources and uh, create a powerful search that will get you what you're looking for? And also, um, you know, how to make sure that everything that you're um, finding and sharing is accessible to others. So it's a really great resource. Um, in addition, um, in the lifelong learning module, you learn about Creative Commons. So this brings you to the resource for seven things you should know about Creative Commons. This is a series. There are many different items in the seven things you should know about. Seven things you should know about blogs, um, video, artificial intelligence, simulations. It's, it's a really great library, but here we're highlighting the one on Creative Commons. And it is just a very short handout that gives you some of the basic information. What is Creative Commons? Why is it important? What are some of the challenges? And so that's just something that um, Creative Commons for a simple definition, it is um, in line with copyright. So a creator can choose to license their work using Creative Commons and they can say whether or not they wish to allow others to use their work and if they um, want others to provide uh, attribution about um, you know, who is the original creator or if you can use it without providing attribution. Um, it also says if um, you can modify that work if you reuse it. Um, and there's many other things and this, um, this recording is just uh, too short to go into that in depth. Um, but um, I did mention that in the MOOC course, uh, we do invite learners to reflect on their learning. So each time they create a digital artifact, we ask them to write a short reflection. Um, we ask them to just put their reflections right on their ePortfolio page. But if you are um, you know, learning something and you wish to create a reflective uh, conversation or essay about what you are learning, Blogs and wikis are a great tool to sh help you share that information. And so here in the MTech Wiki, I have uh, brought you directly to the section of the wiki that will um, show you the collection of blog and wiki tools. And so, um, you know, these are randomly um, ordered. So if you come here another time, you might see this list in a different order. Um, there are 33 different records that relate to blogs and wikis. Um, Blogger is probably one of the most popular tools. So once you see this list, you can then click on the link. It will bring you to a larger page that gives you a very short description. Here is where you can upvote. So Blogger is one of the great tools. So I'm just simply going to click the up arrow and give it an advanced rating. It will only let me vote once per day or once per visit. Um, and so um, I am already logged in. So I see the edit this page option. Um, but if you do wish to log in, you would come to this contribute menu and this link here would say login. Um, so on this page, you would then be able to link out to the blogger platform. It'll tell you a little bit about that platform and allow you to create an account um, and create your first blog.
And so that might be one of your digital artifacts that you create for the MOOC. Um, in addition, very often we will add some related tutorials or resources. And so the blogger help page is linked to from this site. We might add some keywords if they are not included in the description. Um, and then here are where you would find, um, these are the different objectives and the categories that Blogger falls into. So those are for lifelong learning. And another screen I want to show you, um, just a couple resources. Like I said, there's close to 500 in there. So I'm not showing you 500 in this half hour webinar. Um, in communication and collaboration, um, oops, you can't, one of the objectives that you are given as a choice is the ability to enhance collaboration. So collaborative document editing is something that you might wish to explore. And Google Drive and Google Docs is probably the most popular, most used tool in this um, collection, I'm only guessing. Um, but you can learn about using Google Drive and Google Docs. I have used it for um, more than 10 years and I can't imagine life without it. Um, it allows me to co-create content this slideshow also was created using Google Slides, part of the Google suite of tools. And um, I, you know, so here you'll get just a little bit of um, a description. And um, uh, so that is useful. Um, if you wish to communicate with others, uh, web conferencing is something that is extremely used pre or post COVID, um, we are no longer able to meet as often as we would like in person. So these web conferencing tools are kind of like the second nature of how to communicate. And so if you come to this um, wiki and I just did a um, search using the search box for the term web conferencing, and it shows me a number of conferencing tools. Any meeting, big, big blue button, um, Blackboard Collaborate. And uh, the, we have only eight of these web conferencing tools on the site right now. Um, Google Meet is probably one of the newest ones. At my campus, WebEx and Zoom are the enterprise supported tools. And um, for the most part, everything that you find in MTech Wiki is a freely available resource. Um, my campus has chosen to subscribe to the pro versions of WebEx and Zoom, uh, but there are some free trials or free limits to pretty much everything you will find in the Wiki. So you can use it um, at a free level, but then there are more additional advanced features if you buy the pro version. Um, another tool I wanted to share inside of communication and collaboration is concept maps. And those are something that really helps learners to make connections. Uh, what idea is connected to another idea? What concept is connected to another concept? And so um, bubble is one of those items. Um, there is a great, um, we call them a research, research guide created by my colleagues at the University of Buffalo Libraries. And this one is all about data visualization. And so if you follow that link, it will bring you to a page. Um, it is now manned by my um, colleague, Carolyn. And it talks about what is data visualization and um, you know, how do you create a visualization and what are some uh, different tools that you can use and what are the best practices. And in addition, this guide shares um, some examples and resources. Um, so just on this page alone, you can spend many, many hours um, so it's up to you. How long do you wish to explore these tools to find what meets your needs? I'm going to move on to creativity and presentation tools. Everybody 
that is in a learning situation um, or for professional needs, you are often asked to create presentations to summarize and synthesize your learning. So inside of here, there are a selection of presentation tools. Uh, to get to this page, I just uh, selected directly from the categories presentations. And um, not everything is a tool. So this is a the Adobe Ex Education Exchange is a community where people share their different presentations. Um, and uh, it is also uh, provides some lesson plans and materials and workshop information. Uh, Final Cut Pro will help you create video. Um, to create a presentation, there is also visual um, presentation tools. See, there's a nice large number here. 63 items will help you with presentations, uh, creating animations, um, etc. And another area inside of creativity is gamification. So this is something that um, you know you may need to or wish to add some excitement or interest or engagement to your lessons that you're providing to the learners. And so um, there's a bunch of items here that relate to gamification. Uh, Credly Acclaim is a digital badging system, and that happens to be the badging platform that MTech MOOC uses. Um, they uh, actually, they have recently discontinued their free version, so I need to clarify that. I don't know if, yes, I think we did just add that. So June 30th, they removed their free version. But since MTech uses that plat badging platform, we will continue to share it. They have a number of free webinars and resources on their site also. Um, StudyMate is a great tool for creating um, interactive activities like Hangman and crossword puzzles and uh, just quizzes. There are a number of quiz creation tools. Um, here is another resource about seven things you should know about gamification from the Educause initiative and um, escape rooms. So the digital breakout EDU sandbox, one other resource. Um, one more section I want to share is, um, this is relating to module four in the MOOC, is all about critical thinking. And this is a very important module. We all need to understand um, information. It's thrown at us everywhere we look. And so inside of MTech Wiki, there are many resources to help you understand um, data visualization. So here is an example that some of the resources are found within different categories. So they're cross-listed. Um, Equity Maps is a great resource. This allows uh, faculty to ensure that everyone in the course is equally contributing. Um, and uh, Gliffy is something that will allow you to create mind maps and flow charts and um, technical drawings, et cetera. Um, infographics, a great um, resource to create a visual presentation of information. Canva is an online graphic design platform. It's one of the more popular tools. Um, you do see, um, even though we've had about a thousand views on this item, the rating system is not fully taken off. Um, we have only um, 21 plus rating for this. Um, so I think I'm, um, you know, we are, uh, I, we are always trying to figure out how to encourage people to rate um, these tools a little bit more. Um, we started with a thumb up, thumb down, moved to, actually we started with the star system. That was maybe a little complicated. We moved to the thumbs up. Now we're using these arrows. And so we might have wiped out some of those ratings as we've gone along. Um, the MOOC has been uploaded and, and live for a little bit more than two and a half years. Um, it was modeled after a faculty professional development activity that was um, used throughout SUNY for about five years. Um, so we've, you know, 
tried to use this model for um, quite a while and try to continue to learn and improve upon how we're doing things as we go. Um, so another really important skill for critical thinking is being able to search effectively. And so inside of MTech, you can um, uh, find tutorials and information, just how to use the advanced image searching in Google, um, some tutorials on Google searching and, um, and others. And so the last couple of resources I'm going to talk about will help you to gather feedback. So polling is something that is really useful to kind of gauge the opinion or the knowledge of who you're talking about. Uh, word clouds are um, another way to um, you know, kind of uh, gauge the consensus. So what a word cloud is, is, um, uh, people enter different um, responses, or you can take an essay or an article and put that into a word cloud tool, and it'll show you the words that are used most often uh, become bigger than the use that are words less often. And so that uh, often shows some interesting insights. Um, there were different um, polls that you can choose from. Zoom, which is the um, recording tool that I am using right now, um, will also provide polling. And um, Slack has polling, also surveys. Um, and there are a bunch of different choices um, that can assist you there. So that was not meant to be a full overview of all of the tools that are inside of MTech Wiki and how they might be used in a emergency home learning situation. Um, but uh, we did want to do a brief introduction. This page will share um, the link to the site again. So you can get to the wiki and you can also get to the MOOC just by going to suny.edu slash E-M-T-E-C-H. Um, inside of the wiki under the about menu, you will find a number of resources to help you share information. So if you wish to share with your learners, do this voluntary activity as part of your home study habits. Um, there are some flyers that you can uh, share through email, some announcements that you can put on social media and share through email. We have a one minute video that tries to give you a concise introduction. So please, please share information with your colleagues, with your students, with your learners, with your children um, to take advantage of this great opportunity. So um, we would like to thank you for your time. Um, on the screen, you'll see the generic email to contact the MTech MOOC team, and that's E-M-T-E-C-H-M-O-O-C at gmail.com. If you are searching social media, you can search for the hashtag MTechMOOC and you will be able to find some badges and comments and testimonials from people who have participated. And if you have questions, please reach out to us. Um, my name is Robin Sullivan. Um, and my colleague um, who helps run this program is Sheree Van Putten. Our contact information um, directly is on the MOOC under the contact page. And um, I am from the University at Buffalo. Sheree is an instructional designer from Binghamton University. And we have helped to develop the MTech MOOC together with a huge team of faculty, staff, and students from across the SUNY system. And we would look forward to hearing from you. So thank you very much and good luck in all of your learning activities, whether they are remote home emergency learning or whether you will get back to your school or campus and have the opportunity to learn again in person. 
these resources will help you keep pace with emerging technologies for the purpose of learning for your personal and professional growth. Thank you very much.